The Power is Project. Hello, friends. You've been hearing me talk about intake breathing for quite a while now. And so today I thought I'd show you um, what it's all about. So it comes in this nice little compartment here with the nose tabs and with the magnetic strip that goes over the top. And this little thing here connects the tabs put on your nose. Now, what I'm going to do is I will end up editing, editing this because I don't have a mirror in front of me. So when I come back, you're going to see the little tabs. So what I'll do, I'll show you here. So we'll take these tabs out like this. And so what you do is you take this little thing that has a magnet on the end and you bring it up like that. And there is your tab. Okay. And then what you do is you put it on your nose. Actually, I put it this way. You put one on this side and then you put one on this side and then the magnetic strip goes across. And what you'll find is that it works immediately. As soon as you put that strip across, it pulls the, the, your nasal passage, the nose open so that you can breathe more. And as you're gonna find with this episode that I did with Carice, that in order to obtain better health, we need to breathe through our nose. And this is the thing that will do that. The reason why I love this product is because it eliminated my snoring problem that I had. And uh, it also obviously helps me with my, uh, with my athletic performance when I'm lifting weights and when I'm doing my stationary bike. It's just, it's amazing. Uh, you just, it gives you more energy. And like I've said before, when I'm lifting weights, when I have this on, I'm doing two extra reps than when I don't. You wouldn't think it would make that big of a difference, but it really does. And the wonderful thing I love about this is the people who, who are part of Intake Breathing, Alex and Natalie, they're just great people and they offer a money back guarantee. If it doesn't work for you, for whatever reason, they will gladly return your money. They're just a great company. They're great people and this is a great product. So I'll be right back with the little tabs on and then I'll put the magnetic strip on and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, and we're back. So as you can see, I had the little tabs on my nose and the two things I need to show you. One is, is that when you pick up this tab, you, you'll notice these little white tabs, the little uh, that are on the back of it and those peel off and then they stick to your nose. Before you do that, however, step I forgot, is you're going to want to, and, they, and this comes with everything you need. So this is a little alcohol wipe. You just take this off and open this up, wipe your nose off before you stick these on, okay? And then it's this easy. So you can see the way my nose looks now. The good thing I cleaned all the hair out of there. <laughs> and you can see how it opens it up immediately. And, you, and this just keeps you from breathing through your mouth in the night and therefore you don't need to snore any longer. And I know if you have a special somebody you sleep with, they're going to appreciate that. So now, as before, you can go over to intakebreathing.com and you can apply the promo code POWERS and you can get 20% off your order. So like I said, there's nothing to lose and everything to gain because you have a money back guarantee and Natalie and Alex are just two of the greatest people you'd ever want to meet two really super nice people and they stand behind their product and it's easy because it's a great product so go over to intakebreathing.com use the promo code powers get your 20 percent off your your order and we'll, you'll be happy and so will your partner <laughs> hi fridia you're known yes. as fridia to cheetah gibbs and you're also billed as the most dangerous <laughs> woman in the world and i will have to tell you after seeing some of your fights I think they were aptly named because not only do you have this extraordinary power in your punches, but your hands are so fast that it was reminiscent to me of Sugar Ray Leonard. I'm like, I could not believe how fast your hands were. And I was like, and powerful. And so, uh, so I think that you, you, you were aptly named and, and uh, nicknamed to be such, but how did you, how did you get 
the nickname Cheetah, and how did you get started in martial arts? Uh, did you see the movie? You did see the document, right? The yes, short- I did. Right. This is yeah. For, yeah, so just so you know, I know, yeah, I do my research and I know all these things, but gotcha. for, for the viewers and listeners who've ne- who, who haven't seen them, I want gotcha. them to, to know who you are. Okay, yeah, sure, no problem. So, um, the first question was, uh, how do I your nickname, Cheetah? My nickname, oh, geez, well, my high school colors were orange and black, and I ran on a track team. And I was a third leg on the uh, track team, on a relay team. And I'll never forget my mom saying, because my mom used to always come to our track meets, our home track meets. And my mom said, you know, uh, uh, sis, you look like a cheetah running around there, you know, because the orange and black and, you know, it's running fast. And yeah. so that's how I was able to obtain the name of cheetah. And I just kept it. And I kept it. And what was cool is uh, in martial arts, my nephew, you know, he was a little guy, little kid at the time. And what he did, he created a character a cheetah character because I was already in the fight world. So he created all this mask and this cape and everything. And <laughs> I just started wearing it. And that's how it all came about. It was just something that fun that turned into something legendary. Well, I, I want to make sure I, I make uh, this note to the people who are listening and the viewers. You are the first, and I'm using the term that you, that you use, the first Afro, Afro-American woman uh, mm-hmm. kickboxing world champion. That's phenomenal. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. First uh, on the planet. So All praise to God. The question yeah. I have to ask you is who were your role models? Because as far as females go, uh-huh. there was no one before you, was there? Not, I mean, not really. Yeah. Well, you know, let me share this with you. I grew up in the sixties. So I was born in the sixties. So I grew up in the seventies and eighties and it was a really cool, soulful times. So one of my female mentors I don't know if you are familiar with her, but um, her name is Christy Love. Get Christy Love. Mm -hmm. She was one of my mentors, you know, back in the day, as far as movies was concerned, as far as athletics was concerned. Back then, I was always hearing about Wilma Rudolph, Wilma Rudolph, Wilma Rudolph. You dig? So she was also a great mentor that, you know, someone that I could look up to. And in addition to that, that was track and field. Then you got movies. And then I had Dr. J. You know what I'm saying? I love Dr. Dr. J. Oh, my God. You know, me being from Philadelphia and him playing for Philadelphia. I mean, how do you think Michael Jordan became Michael Jordan? Michael Jordan became Aaron Jordan by emulating Dr. J. If there's any conversation about the NBA and who's the greatest, Dr. J should be in that conversation at all time because they all emulated the doctor. And he's smooth, intelligent. Oh, man. So, yeah, we had the Dr. J there. And, of course, during my time, like I'm saying, I had to, I grew up with doing a really cool time. And also, we had Bruce Lee. You did? So, <laughs> exactly. those are my mentors. Who were your mentors, Champ? You just named two of them. Honestly, I have, a, I have a poster of Bruce Lee, or a painting of Bruce Lee, excuse me, a painting of Bruce Lee here. Dr. J is someone who I've, he lives here in Orlando. I've actually seen him out at a restaurant, and that man can down some hot dogs. I watched him down. Right? A, do- a half a dozen hot dogs in one day but he's just such a nice nice person and you're right i was so happy in class uh, in 83 when they won the, the championship because i was like it would be disheartening to, to know that the greatest player at least at that time didn't have a championship ring and and so i was so glad that they won yeah and uh it's and he, true you're right he's just a class act and you know it made me not like Larry Bird, not that I really cared about him or not you know, beforehand, but I remember the one time I saw Dr. J get angry and he grabbed Larry Bird by the throat. And I was like, he must have really did or said something because Dr. J never lost his cool. He yeah. always, If a fight broke out, he'd sit down in the middle of the court with the ball and just wait till they got done with their foolishness. So Right. You, so you had some great, you know, great role models as far as. as I'm trying to tell you, listen. Anyone who grew up in my era, we had those those mentors. There was absolutely no reason everybody should be successful because of those mentors that we had. I agree. That makes sense. I, yeah, because I grew up in the same in the same time you did, and yeah. and you just could. You're right. Not only did we we have the greatest music, as far as I'm concerned, we had the greatest athletes at the time too. And they oh were yeah. Just, trailblazers legends legends yeah and trailblazers but you're a trailblazer yeah yeah you know? and and so 
my friend Ronnie, I have to give props to him because he's a he's a trainer at uh, Titleist Boxing and uh, here in Orlando. Hi, Ronnie. And uh, Ronnie's the one who who put who uh, shared your YouTube video, um, which is the Frida Gibbs or the Frida Gibbs story. And uh, and I watched it and I was like, how have I never heard of her? Honestly, <laughs> I feel right. so stupid for not having heard of you. And I go, someone's someone of your caliber should be world i mean known worldwide you know through by everybody is because everyone knows or anyone who follows boxing knows uh layla ali yeah why don't they should know you just as well as they know layla you know, oh yeah if not yeah. more you know i'm like cinderella you know what i mean <laughs> it, it, it it is what it is i'm like cinderella and now that you and everyone's coming. The whole world. I'm the free. The Freedia Gibbs, gives. Uh, the name Freedia gives is uh, about to be is a household name. It's about to become a household name. I see that. You and do, I'm, and I'm happy. It's 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 long overdue. And I yes, it is that there's a that there's a uh, talk about having a seven foot statue, a copper bronze statue of you. Yeah, Chan, what a blessing. I'm trying to tell you, you know, what a blessing to to, to give to the children, show the children, you know, uh, martial art, too. It'd be the first uh, martial art uh, statue on the planet of a female and the second uh, of a martial arts because Bruce Lee is the first. So, you know, that that's truly an honor within itself. Absolutely. You do? Yes. Now, are you... Have they inducted you into the Hall of Fame of Martial Arts yet? No, I've not gotten in uh, that invitation. Well, I've gotten several invitations, but there were certain stipulations that went with that, which we didn't agree with. So let's put it that way. Okay. Yeah, I, I have. I have, yes. Well, that needs to be done. They need to get rid of whatever stipulations those are and just put you in there. So. <laughs> how did you, so how did you get started in martial arts to begin with? Like, Oh, you're kidding me. You're kidding me, Kurt. How how do we all get started in martial arts or some type of self-defense? We got bullied when we were kids. Yep, that was me. I got bullied as a young kid. You know, um, I got teased a lot because I was, you know, I, I my body was different from the average girl. I, I had an athlete. God blessed me with an athletic body. You know, so they teased me a lot about my body, but I was extremely intelligent. You know, and it started off by me helping them do their homework and from me helping them do their homework to them forcing me to do their homework. And then me not wanting to do their homework and them chasing me home because I wouldn't do their homework. You know what I mean? So it all happened like that, champ. And uh, my self-confidence and self-esteem was extremely low. I had contemplated, you know, hurting myself. And my uncle came along and put his arm around my shoulder. He was a martial art instructor. I'll never forget this day, man. He put his arm around my shoulder. We were walking down the street. He says, so I hear that you're being bullied in school. I was like, yeah. He said, well, and I hear that you're running school to school, school to school. I'm like 10, 11 years old, transferring school to school every time. So every time there was a bully, it was time for me to transfer. Oh, my God. <laughs> I've got to transfer. I've got to transfer. I'll never forget that, man. And he was like, look at here, Freedia. You so, can't continue to run all your life. So your you uncle is who taught you martial arts? Yeah, well, he was an instructor at Quiet Storm Martial Arts School in, in my uh, hometown. And there's an interesting story that I that I saw about you that your uncle had had the key to the door and said you have to get past me to be able to get out that door. Yeah. And I just farm every Saturday for one hour. And if you got until I was able to get past him. <laughs> get the so, key and get past him and i got it too it wasn't easy i got it so it and that's of, how i earned my black belt oh really that's, that's when, exactly how i earned my black belt i didn't earn my black belt through the uh, traditional way you know i earned it by sparring him every saturday and getting fighting him to get that key to get out the door and walk in what to, to get out the door you know that was it you remember the old uh, tv show kung fu yeah, I remember Kung Fu. I remember David Carradine too. Yes, and he, it, he was my neighbor at one time. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Did uh -huh. you spar him? Pardon? Did you ever spar with David Carradine? No, 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 no. I think he, I think he knew, but he knew better. <laughs> no, nah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. He was, uh, he was kind of old at that time. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it would have been just like your uncle doing the key was like when when he, when the his uh, when when the um, 
when David Carradine's character would be told, when you can snatch the pebble from my hand, it's time for you to go. And so you that's right. that key and it was time for you to go. <laughs> yeah. And, and you know what? It paid off that whole uh, quiet storm experience. And uh, at uh, in Chester was such a great experience. It was, it was such a great foundation. I had the opportunity to, and I didn't even know, realize it at the time. And they were experimenting on me. And they, they told me as I got older, they were experimenting on me and they, they created me. You know, here I am, this young girl amongst all these lethal, intelligent men. I mean, judges, doctors, lawyers, engineers, you know what I mean? Blue collar men, you know, it was amazing. And we were all sparring and, and against each other. It was just an incredible, they were pouring all their knowledge into me. And it was just such a great experience. That's amazing. I mean, to to have that at your at your fingertips, that, that these people you know, were there for you. That must have been just, you know, great being surrounded by people like that. Yeah, yeah, it's certainly, especially at a young age, so important. We all need great mentors in, in our life, you know? Absolutely. And is do you find yourself in that role now where, where especially young uh, women are looking up to you and, and asking you for advice and to help them through not just sports and fighting, but, you know, in life in general? Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's my duty. You know, it happened to me, and now it's my job to pass it on. You dig? Yeah. To share the blessings and pass it on. It's always important to pass the torch. That's a real champion. And I was just going to say that that is a real champion because not everybody realizes that. Some people become very successful and forget to do that part they think that you know that they can you know receive all the benefits and never give back and that's uh, that's not the way a champ acts right right yeah um because of your because of your um you basically being a trailblazer and and um and winning and becoming a, the kickboxing world champion and you and other women like you now there's this this popularity, especially in MMA, where you have, you know, that, in fact, there are some of the best fights in UFC that they have nowadays. And so now you have, you know, you have women like Ronda Rousey, you have uh, Amanda Nunes, you have uh, Gina Carano. And what are your thoughts on on that popularity? And, and basically, these women are, are there off of your back. And how do you, and what do you think about the fighters themselves? I think they're all very good fighters. All of them are trailblazers, you know, uh, in their own right. And um, they're female warriors. They're, they're part of what, what it takes to become a champion. They're all champions. Respect to them all, you know? Right. Yeah. yeah. They, I, I don't, you know, when you watch, when you watch women fight, I, promise you those fights are the most exciting and they're the ones that go non-stop like they don't rest men always like you'll watch them in and they'll and they'll be you know just feeling each other out in the middle of the you know the, the octagon uh-huh. and they're, because they're they're resting they're taking breath <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. these women just go at each other non-stop i i don't know yeah, man. yeah we don't play around no we ain't got wait listen here we when we fight we are not going there to uh, be make friends. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> We're not there to make friends. We are coming to uh, put it down. Tap gloves. We there. We're going in to tap some gloves. The um, when you won your champion, or when you won the championship, and you you were, you were fighting the champion, and uh, and she was known as the most dangerous woman in the world at the time. Mm -hmm. But your mother said, (laughs) no, that's not true. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. That's my mom. And she was right too. She had to, you know, she had to claim her title. Hey, ho, ho, ho. How the hell is she going to be the most dangerous woman in the world when I am? Hey, 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 hey. You do? (laughs) It sounds like your mom was like a really supportive of you. Oh, oh yeah, big time. You know, my whole family. 
You know, I come from a very, I mean, obviously you saw my uncle, he came along and, you know, uh, introduced me to martial arts to help me to rebuild my self-confidence, my self-esteem. So I come from a very supportive family, you know? Right. And that's, yeah. and I think that's huge for people to succeed in life. I think that the support that they get in particular mm. from their family is, is extremely important. So, right. Do you, do you ever, now I know that you're retired. But when you see the popularity of MMA nowadays, do you ever go, man, I wish I could, I wish this would have been no. about 20 years earlier? <laughs> no. no, I don't think like that. Really? You know, yeah, yeah, I don't think like that. And I guess it probably surprised a lot of people. Um, you know, this is my time. It's, it, I, it, everyone has their time, their error, you know, to make their marks in history. And that was just, that was simply my time. Um, the reason why y'all didn't know about me is because it was a shock to the promoters as well. It re- it was I it w- I really shocked the world. They were not prepared for this. They were not prepared for me to win. You dig? Right. And it just shocked the whole industry. I know you said that when you were fighting, that your legs were getting tired in that championship yeah. fight. And you're like, Lord, my feet, my legs are getting tired. <laughs> Help me out here. And then you ended up uh, hitting her twice and knocking her out. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and did, were you surprised or did you, did you know you were going to win that fight? I knew I went there. I, I knew I prepared for the fight. I prepared to win. I always trained to win anything that's the only thing i know how to do kurt is win i knew that it was going to be a very hard fight because i'm fighting the most dangerous woman in the world X. you dig X. in front of 20 35,000 people you understand right i knew that there was only one way that i was going to win when i walked into that arena I knew, like I tell, I tell people, I knew it was the world championship fight and I knew it was pay-per-view. But when I stepped into San Jose's arena, I was like, my first thought was, whoa, what have I got myself into? You know what I mean? That was my first thought. And then my second thought was, whoa, this is serious. And then once I saw the ring, that's when I realized I, it, that was my connection. This is the reason why I'm here. And all my main focus was going to that ring. I didn't care about the people around me. You know, it's going to that ring. And then that's when I heard them yell, that's the black girl who came here to get knocked out. And they were just, chant, they were just chanting it. You know what I mean? And that surprised me. And also it angered me. And it takes a lot to piss me off. You did. It, it, it does. It really takes a lot to piss me off. And not only did it anger me, it, it inspired me. And then that's when I had to say a special prayer to the good love above. Tonight, Father, we're going to shock the world. And I said, we going to shock the world. You did. Yeah. Well, it's a, I mean, it's nothing short of amazing, you know, where you, where you took this. And then you went on to have like, was it a 16 or 17 um, fight where you undefeated and, and out, out of that 16 or 17, like 15 or 16 of them were knockouts. 15. Yeah. 15 KOs. Yeah. Wow. And that's what people fail to realize when I went into the world championship fight and all my fights, I went, I, I, I can't, I come with knockout power. When I went into the championship fight, I had, I was 11 and O with 10 knockouts. That's, that's unbelievable. I mean, I, I don't even, it, and the men's and men's boxing or men's um, kickboxing, I don't think is, is there such a record like that. So listen to this, Kurt. So there was a ninety nine point nine percent chance that she was gonna get knocked out. <laughs> <Very true. laughs> you because I went in. My record was eleven and ten. Eleven wins, ten by the way of knockout. So this is a ninety nine, and that's exactly what happened. Yes, it was, and it was it was only in the. What round did that happen in? It was the third round, champ. Yeah. I never forget as long as I live. It didn't take you long to, to dispose of her. Oh, it seemed long because I'm telling <laughs> girlfriend, her bullets was her bullets was coming. She was alone. 
<laughs> I'm telling you, I see why they get call her the most dangerous woman in the world. I, like I shared with her, I wish that she we would have did a three, a best out of three. That would have been fun. Oh, Something yeah. to talk about in the future. You dig? Yeah. Did she not want to? Did she not want to fight you again? No. Yeah. Well, she's, she's like, fine. girl, you hit me so hard. <laughs> I ain't never been hit like that before. I ain't get back in ring with you ever again. <laughs> I was like, let's just do an ex- exhibition. She's like, not ever again. <laughs> I, I can understand where she's coming from. <laughs> that was funny, Chan. It's, um, it's hard to talk about your accomplishments without talking about some of the hardships and the obstacles and challenges that you had to overcome in your life. And one of those is well known and uh, that about a guy named uh, Lonnie David Franklin. And mm-hmm. that you had to deal with without talking about it in great detail or anything. Um, do you want to, do you want to tell the story or what would you like to talk about with that? You know, just keeping it short, you know, um, I learned a lesson myself. Here I am complete stranger at, at this uh, uh, place of uh, uh, employment. You know, everybody playing dominoes. I agreed to go down and play dominoes with them. Complete strangers. And it was just a very naive thing that I did. Um, I learned how to play dominoes, lost my bus fare, lost my money, lost everything, and t- accepted a ride home from a complete stranger. You dig? I say go right, he go left. And uh, what happened was, um, you know, he was like, oh, look at here, you know, let me let me just stick it in. And I was like, nah, man, I don't want you sticking it in. You know, and I tried to bust out the door, but I couldn't because there was no knob. You dig? So what right. I did, I tried to run to the back of the van to run out the door. And it was this big chain on it and a lock. And it was just him and I. And see, he he wasn't conditioned to go 10 rounds. Yeah. You dig? I'm just going to keep it 100. He wasn't. Um, I was. And I thank God that I just knew martial arts and I was just prepared. You dig? It was very terrifying experience because we fought for some time. I don't know how long we fought in that van, but we fought. You dig? And then finally, I threw a couple leg kicks, took his first front leg from underneath, from underneath him, you know, and then that's when he came to tackle me. And he kept calling me out my name, you know, B, when I get you. I'll never forget that, you know, B, when I get you. And uh, when he came to tackle me, that's when I used some Aikido on and grabbed his shirt tail. Because in martial arts, we learn how to use people's clothing as right. weapons against them. You know what I mean? And uh, I used his clothing against him as weapons. And once I was able to, you know, um, detain him, you know, I got the lock off the chain door, the chain off the uh, lock. I busted up door there. And uh, that's not just that's why I said what I said. When a bitch says no, she means no, because throughout that whole time that we were going at it you know he kept calling me out my name so i wanted to make sure i put an exclamation point on that last hit when a b says no and let me share with you what my definition of bitch means okay b-i-t-c-h i was always taught is babe in total control of herself <laughs> that's bitch okay yes so that's my definition that's what my mama taught me you did? Yes. Well, yeah. when, you, when you said that to him, because I, I, I saw your, your story, and when you said that, when a bitch says no, she means no. I was like, that's <laughs> the most false thing anybody could have said after just whooping him. And get, it's like, <laughs> you would have thought he would have learned his lesson in, in that he would have said, oh, I guess better not do that again. But what it turned out to be was that he ended up being a serial killer, and you found out 15 years after the fact by when he when his face was put on TV and you ended up calling your mom and saying, this is the guy, you know. Yeah. So that must that have- freaked me out, dude. I'm yeah. telling you, that freaked me out. And I thought back like, holy cow, like, oh, my God, you know, it all makes sense because he was the chain on the door, the right. lock. You know, I'm thinking the, the knob missing, the chain on the door, the lock. I, I was thinking about all those things like, damn, you know. Wow, yeah. that was really major. And to this day, I have PTSD, you know, and very severe as a result of that van experience. And to this day, every time I, I walk in, when I'm in the world and I see a van, I go through something where I fear that a girl is in there fighting for her life like I was fighting for mine. 
You understand? I, yeah, absolutely. And, and it's just not a good feeling, you know, because I know that it happens. It almost happened to me. And this guy killed had killed over 100, you know, uh, African-American women in, in South Central. You did? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah bro, I'm trying to tell you. It's so, just it's deep. For any any females, especially any young females who may see this or or listen to this, what's your do you have any advice for them? Yes, every, to every not even young young, especially you young ones, you young birds are still at home in your bird's nest. What you need to do, you need to learn mixed martial arts. Eat right now at a young age, because your sheep's. You need to learn mixed martial arts to build your confidence, build your self-esteem, but also to help you defend yourself. And more importantly, to help to bring out the beast in you, to help you to identify your beast. So when you need to turn your beast on, you can turn it on. Meaning it takes a beast to tame a beast. Am I making sense to you? Absolutely. You know, yep. and when you need right. to turn it on, turn it on, but remain a sheep. But when you need to turn or bring that beast out, you know how to bring it out to protect yourself. Every girl on this planet needs to learn martial arts. And what's crazy, what's crazy is in Brazil, all the kids are learning martial arts. That's mandatory. All of them. It's like learning English. And in and, and Thailand, it's like, like learning and, 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 and learning English, martial arts. In Korea, in Asian countries, in Africa, in the United States, it should be mandatory. Just like English, Spanish, and martial arts should be mandatory. Because what it would do, Kurt, it will help build the confidence in those bullies because something is obviously wrong with bullies for them to bully people so obviously they got low self-confidence and low self-esteem too something's going on at home so what that, that would do is also change you know the way bullies are thinking so it would better the bully that makes sense absolutely and i completely agree with you unfortunately not only do we not teach martial arts and it's not mandatory it's not even mandatory for them to have physical education anymore well that's terrible it is that doesn't make sense I, I agree with you. It's, and it's yeah. part of the reason why the country is 70% overweight, you know, so. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You know, I mean, I remember when we, we could say our prayers in school. Now, you you know, you can't even say your prayers in school. I would not, you know, you can't even thank God in school. You know, come they on, that's crazy. Say, I think they can still say prayers, but they're, they're silent. Like it, people aren't made to participate and, and, they can't be out loud. I think that's the the rule right. for most schools. I, I'm not. Uh -huh. Don't quote me on. That, I don't know. Um, one of the one of the last things I want to talk to you about, which I also think is very boss of you, is that, that uh, you thanked your bullies because I think it's mm -hmm. so important that people understand that you, Fridia, became the world's champ not because of all the comforts in in your life, but because of all the challenges in your life. And as bad as bullies are, and I'm not saying that, you know, they sh that they should be allowed to bully people. But if you're strong enough, you can, you know, you can use what they did to you to your advantage and make you stronger. Is that? Yeah. You know, bullies have a gift. You know, if you look at it in a positive way, because they're coming at you negatively. <laughs> if, if you, are you following me? Yes. They have a gift. If you look at it in a positive way, because they're coming at you negatively, I can give you a prime example myself. I can only tell you about my own personal experiences from a young child, Kurt, they would tease me about my body, the way that I was built because I was built like an athlete for a long, all, all my life. So I had this complex about my body and I would always wear big clothing. You dig? Right. When I knocked out the, the most dangerous woman in the world on pay-per-view, listen to this here. I received a six figure contract, modern contract was Sebastian International and did the move. They always had me in bikinis showing my body. Am I making sense to you? And I'm like, this is crazy. I'm watching them talk about my body and how amazing it is and like a goddess and all these things and put her in a bikini and snap, 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 snap. And in my mind, I'm thinking, this is crazy. When I was a kid, these kids teased me about my body. And here are these people in Hollywood dressing me up in bikinis and everything and telling me how beautiful it is. This is crazy. So back to the bullies, they have a gift because they are able to identify your gift, but they just do it in a negative way. That's why they too need to learn martial arts. Well, you did? Right, yeah, because if they learn martial arts, I, <laughs> you know, most of them won't be bullies they, because they won't be insecure anymore. They won't be doing whatever yeah. they fear. So Show yeah. them how to express themselves in a, in, a, in a more professional, you know, a way, 
rather than an ignorant, you know, negative way, more, more, more positive way rather than a negative way. Right. That makes that, sense. Yeah. That's, those are wise words of wisdom right there. And I, yeah. I completely agree with you. Um, you know, honestly, I could stay here for a good another hour. I know that you have other interviews you have to do. So I yeah, just want to thank you so much for, for taking time out of your day and, uh, and, and sharing with my audience and, and your story. And uh, I just, I wish you the best. You, you're, you're just a, you know, you're a role model for, for not just women, free males or, or, you know, for males as well. I just, if they get a chance, go watch her fight. And tell me that you don't give her all the respect in the world for being the champ that she is. So, Freedia, sweet. Thank you. thank you so much. And uh, absolutely, you're the champ. And Kurt, still the baddest woman on earth. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Well, you know, doing my time. Thank you so much. Listen, um, the way you can find me, I am Freedia Cheetah Gibbs. I am Freedia Cheetah Gibbs. You can find me Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter. I am Freedia Cheetah Gibbs. If you want to take a look at the uh, video, you know, uh, the Free to Give story, it's on YouTube, the Free to Give story, and that's Free to Give. Check it out. Make a comment there. And Kurt, I want to say thank you so very much for having me on. I really appreciate it. And, you know, uh, God bless you and God bless all your fans. OK, peace, yeah. love and happiness. This is what I want to leave you guys on. Note. One note, my, my quote to all of you, if someone says it can't be done, smile and then reply. Maybe it can't. But I won't be the one to have said so until I've tried. So y'all make sure y'all try, okay? Peace, love, and happiness. I'm out of here. That's great. Thank <laughs> you, Fridia. Have a great one. And uh, and everybody, you, I will have her links connected below so you can find her everywhere you need to, to find her and, and watch her fights and watch her story. So, Fridia, thank you. Take care of yourself. You too, champ. Bye now. Bye now.